Yeah. All right, so thank you so much to the KO SSC office for helping us with that technical difficulty. And um, alongside the KO SSC office, we are here today to represent the Association for International Students. So that is myself. Um, we have Devasha, Rebecca, as well as Hillary. Um, so to start off, the Association of International Students is actually um, our KO recognized um, organization in the SSC community that helps to bridge as well as foster and create interlinkages and relationships between the SFC community and the Japanese students and the international community at SFC. So to start, hi, my name is Leanne. I am an incoming third year student next semester under the Faculty of Environment and Information Studies. I was born and raised in the Philippines. Um, as for my research field, I pretty much am pursuing the advanced biosciences and the neurosciences. And as for um, my extracurriculars are concerned, I am doing much of my work with the Association for International Students. So to, next would be Devasha. Um, hello, wait, am I audible? Hello, my name is Devasha. Um, I'm also an incoming third year in the Faculty of Environment and Information Studies. I was born and raised in Indonesia. And as for my field of research, I'm currently in a business seminar and is also interested in web development. Um, for the circles I'm involved in, I'm involved in the circle AIS, as well as art and technology circle and also a board game circle. So yeah, that's all for me and um, Hilly next. Hi, uh, so I'm Hilly. I'm from Indonesia as well. I'm Balinese and I'm in coming um, second year. Um, as for my um, research, I'm studying mostly about education. I want to know like how to teach properly and I'm interested in like curriculum design. And um, as for my circles, I'm in this circle, AIS, as well as another circle called Koki because um, I like drawing. So sometimes when I'm free, like I draw and join the circle there. Yeah. So next is Rebecca. Oh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Rebecca and I'm an incoming third year student in the Faculty of Policy Management. Um, I'm born and raised in Shanghai, China, and uh, I'm mainly studying about the civil service, local administration of a country, and uh, uh, a part of AIS. I'm also the member of a board game circle and uh, that's all for my introduction. Thank you. All right, thanks so much, Devasha, Hillary, and Rebecca. So now um, on this segment of the webinar, we are now free to answer any and all questions that you may have via the Zoom chat box. Um, let's give a couple seconds for the participants to send us some questions. If not, then we can go on with some questions from, um, from the internal group. I guess some people are still a bit shy to send in their questions. So I guess the first question we can have from, from the internal group would be, why did you choose SFC among the other universities in Japan or overseas? Um, maybe we can start with Hillary. Okay. Um, the main reason why I chose Japan is because um, I'm from Indonesia. So it's a country that's like abroad, which is not as far as like um, the West, like the Americas or like countries in Europe. So um, I wanted to still stay within like Asia, but not too close like Singapore. <laughs> so Japan was like the perfect spot, you know? Um, and cost-wise it's also like good for me. So that was like the starting point of like why I chose Japan. Yeah. All right, thanks so much, Hilary. Um, what about Rebecca? Oh, as we all know, Japan is a super safe country compared to U.S., which gong shot every day, right? Uh, so like the reason why I chose SFC because when I was in high school, I thought studying in a place that's far away from downtown can help me focus on my studying, and that's why I come to SFC. And yes, the Scenery is super good in SFC. You can see in my background and everyone else's background. And we got great sakura trees during the spring. It is super good. Yeah. Thanks. 
Thanks for that, Rebecca. And onwards to Devasha. Oh, well, don't be fooled. This background is probably edited. <laughs> but um, I only chose SSC because graduating high school, I had no idea. Like I had a clue on what I wanted to do, but then I felt like if I just did like a course, uh, like a very like like decided choice major, um, that you know I'd be losing the chances of exploring other things. And in FFC, it allows you to explore a lot more options, and you're not really you don't have to really commit to anything yet, um, at least until you join your like, third year or fourth year. So I definitely think it gives you a lot more options on what to do for your future. Thanks so much for that, Devasha. And before we move on to a question given by Keith, I can answer the last. Um, so I chose SSC among the other universities in Japan and overseas was um, similar to Hillary's um, answer. My parents didn't want me to go too far. Um, so I decided on Japan first because I really, really like Japanese pop culture. And I thought that one way for me to really um, find a way to get closer to my interest would be to study in Japan and specifically in SFC because I was really drawn to their um, very liberal science um, curriculum. I could choose a variety of science programs as well as um, IT stuff. So I thought that was really interesting and that was something that not a lot of other universities in Japan could do. Um, so that's it for me. Um, moving onwards to now Keith's question, is the relation between the students and professors close? Um, maybe we can start with Hillary, again. Sure. Um, I think that the relation between students and professors in SFC are very close. Um, I'm an incoming like second year, but I've already joined like two seminars and I felt like um, seminars are basically um, more advanced classes, you could say, that you can keep joining like every semester and you can do your um, thesis like in a uh, those seminars. So I've already joined two. And from that, um, I feel like I've got closer to the professor and I'm going to like retake this seminar like again and again. So there's definitely like a close relationship forming from that. Um, I also ask like a lot of help from my professors in that way. And um, it's like comfortable to do that in SFC. So I would say, yeah, the relation between like students and professors are very close. All right, so thanks so much, Hillary, for talking a little bit about um, seminar stuff. What about for Rebecca? Can you share with us something about um, classes related? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so the most, the closest relationship between professor and the student could be inside the seminar. That's a very good, uh, important point from Hillary. Uh, so because seminar usually in small groups and uh, you're led by uh, senpai, uh, senior students and professors. So if you got any questions or any interested in any interest in studying or researching, you should go directly to the professor. So that's why I think the relationship between professor and the students would be very uh, close if you are brave enough to ask enough questions and share enough your life wisdom and so I have to say uh, studying in SFC is pretty uh, liberal so uh, you have to know what you want to study and you have to explore more more field enough to see uh, what kind of professor you like, what kind of research you like, and then you can develop a further relationship with them. And that's all. All right. Thanks so much, Rebecca. So now we have um, a couple of new questions coming in. Um, firstly, what clubs or circles do you recommend for incoming giga freshman students? Um, Devasha, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, so unfortunately, there is a limited amount of English circles available in SFC. But in recent years, I think it's starting to increase. Uh, we have JES, which is a circle where Japanese and English people can communicate uh, using sports. Um, and then we have the board game circle, which just recently opened like this year or last year. And it actually, uh, Rebecca was the founder of that club, uh, the English version of that club. And then there is AIS. Um, I don't know, is there, um, on top of my mind, oh, there is a dance circle, which a lot of 
Quechua students join. Um, so yeah, these are mostly the circles that English speaking schools, English speaking students join. Thanks so much, Devasha. And just to add on a little bit about that, um, while I do agree that there are very limited clubs or circles that are very much open to um, only English speakers, I think that one way for you to really strengthen your relationships with other students would be to also join um, Japanese uh, clubs or circles. Um, very often you will find that there are Japanese students who can also speak English. So if you're not that confident with your Japanese, um, you're, you're, you can be rest assured that there will be students there who will help you. All right, so now we have more questions coming in. So what kinky kai or seminars have you taken? Which one has been your favorite? Um, so I guess I can answer this one and then next would be Rebecca. So the kinky kai that I'm in, I've Ever since I was a freshman, I think I've been in five or six now. Um, the one that I am very much active in would be the Tomita Kenkyukai, which is the Advanced Biosciences Seminar. Um, the reason why I'm, this has been my favorite seminar thus far and the one that I've been in since I was a freshman, simply because I like that they give me independence over what I want to study and what I want to do research on. So within the Tomita Kenkyukai, there are about 100, 200 of us students all in that Kenkyukai. So it ranges from bachelors, I mean, from undergraduate students all the way up to doctoral students. So you will really have the chance and opportunity to really meet and talk and discuss with other um, students in Keio University to be able to develop the research path that you want to take, especially in the advanced biosciences. Um, and so when you join the Tomita Kenkyukai, you are able to choose a mentor. And from there, you are able to um, discuss as well as pave the way for your research proposal and for later on when you graduate your thesis paper. Um, Rebecca, onwards to you. Okay, thank you. So I like very different from the end i only had one kinku kai since my second year uh my kinku kai professor is uh, shinohara sensei uh so i took his class in a regular like a previous semester and then i decided to join his kinku kai so i sent an email to him and usually there will be an interview or something and that's common for every kinku kai you usually need to go past a test or interview or just let the teacher know you and what knowledge you have already had in this field um so but unlike other professors so shinohara sensei was super chill a uh, research and what kind of knowledge i have to acquire before i enter the king Yuka. and uh so the thing is uh I learned a lot from the Kinkyukai and I have do my study and research and it changed it a lot uh I really like it and I want to explore more in the local administration. That's why I joined his Kinko Kai. Uh, but I also heard a lot from my other friends in SFC that their Kinko Kai is really uh, have a lot of work to do and they are working for the professor on in a collaborative project or they working on their own uh, research but they join different kinkyukai in order to acquire different knowledge for their research so it's actually depend on yourself like what's your choice what do you want to do in sfc and then you go to different professors and ask for their opinion and you see uh, what kind of kinkyukai will suit for you and that's all thanks so much for that rebecca and so now we're moving on to the next question um, are students in SSC allowed to study more than one field of study in their specific main field of study? Um, I think maybe to rephrase, are SSC students allowed to study multiple subjects all at once? Um, so to start, let's go to Devasha and then followed by Hillary. Maybe you can talk a little bit about your own fields of study. Um, yes, um, of course. Uh, we're able to, I think that's like the beauty of SSC is that you're able to just you know take as many fields as you want to be able to explore especially in your first and second year uh for me personally um I am interested in business but I'm also interested in IT um so I take uh, I take kinky guys in both um and I know a lot of my friends who take both like IT but then they also take like more policy management 
kind of uh, you guys. So definitely you'll be able to take uh, a myriad of studies that you want to take. Um, Hilly, is there anything else to add? Yeah, um, also the same. Like I'm into Kenkyukai's because I'm pursuing like two different um, fields of study, like within um, the umbrella of like education. So one is more related to like education in the policy management side, and one is like education within the like teaching linguistics, like teaching languages side. So very different, but still kind of like under the same umbrella. Um, you can do the same, like what Devasha is doing. And not even with just Kenki Kai's, you can explore like different craft classes. Like um, I liked drawing, so I applied to a class um, for like drawing um, perspectives and things like that. It's actually for like architecture majors, but I wanted to try it out. So I applied for it. So you can do things like that. It's the beauty of SFC, like Tabasha said. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tabasha and Hilary. Um, so do we do have another question. It's a little bit more straightforward, and I do want to tackle these um, with one speaker only. So does SFC offer dormitories? Um, for this one, um, yes, they do. They've recently opened up the SFC International Dormitory. It's right across campus, and I think Hillary is in that uh, dorm. Hillary, would you like to talk a little bit about that? Uh, sure. Um, I'm... I got in uh, since like the first semester that I was here um, because of like the whole COVID re regulations. I didn't come in like at the start of the semester. I came like sort of mid semester and stuff, um, but it's very convenient if you have the chance of applying to the um, SFC International Dormitory, which is the newest one, you can sort of like wake up late for your first class. So it's very convenient in terms of like transportation and things like that as well. Thanks so much, Hilary. And um, is it easy to enter Japan? I'm guessing this is for um, international students like ourselves. Um, Devasha, would you like to talk a little bit about that? Um, I'm actually not too sure about this because a lot of things have changed since I last entered. I entered back in 2020. But from last I heard, I think, um, you know, as long as you have a student visa, you'll be able to enter. I think Leanne, since you entered pretty recently, you would know a little bit more. Is that true? As long as you have a student visa? Yeah, I would say that it's much, much easier now to enter Japan so long as you are guaranteed a student visa. So I don't think you'd have to worry too much about that part. All right, so we, I hope we answered your questions. Um, I guess next, um, I'm wondering what's the requirement score for SAT and TOEFL for entering GIGA? Also, how many students is GIGA taking each year? Um, I guess I can answer this question. I think students are not particularly sure or are aware of what the requirement score or cutoff is for SAT and TOEFL for the GIGA program at SFC. Um, although I would say uh, as for the GIGA program, maybe around 30 to 35 students are being taken in per year. Although I could be wrong, um, I would let the KO SFC office to answer that question. Um, next question would be, would you say that the courses provided in SFC are more STEM related? Um, so let's hear a little bit from Rebecca about that. Uh, well, this the classes in SFC are really various. So for me, I hate math and uh, programming. Therefore, I barely took the classes in STEM area except for the required one. Uh, so I would definitely not say that the uh, courses provided in SFC are more STEM related. There is more politics, there's more cultural related there's uh, also uh art and urban planning and a lot of things you can explore in sfc but the thing is if you attend sfc then you are required to study data science and programming because if you don't do that you can't graduate from this school so from this perspective perspective yeah it's quite stem required in this campus Thanks so much, Rebecca. Um, and I guess just to 
add on a bit to that. Um, if you know what you're studying, you will definitely find more courses and classes that are available that are not only STEM related. Um, so moving onward to the next question, are bigger students allowed to join regular Japanese circles too, given that we know how to speak in Japanese? That is a, um, a very direct question. And the answer to that is very much yes. Um, can you get a job in a country other than Japan if you take the Giga program in SFC, or does it become less likely because you studied in Japan? Um, so I think I would be moving this, I would be giving this question to maybe Devasha or Rebecca, considering they might know a couple of um, senpai who um, have shared those kinds of experiences. Hilary, if you have something you'd like to add, feel free to do so. Let's start with Devasha. Um, I'm actually not too informed about this topic, um, but I, I would say that Keio is a pretty, has a pretty, uh, is a well-respected university, um, but in terms of jobs outside, I would say I'm not too familiar. Um, Rebecca, do you have any input on this? Uh, so... We're third year, like incoming third year students. So we actually didn't start job hunting right now. Uh, but as since Giga is an international program and KO is a well-known university, I guess you definitely can find a job overseas if you try harder uh, because the time zone differences and the different job applying platforms. Uh, I think if you work hard, then you can definitely get into the these companies you want to go, but it's just, uh, you have to know the right way to do that. Cause since we are here, we are trying to find a job in Japan. Uh, personally, I want to find a job in Japan because I want to stay here longer and explore more. So I didn't pay attention to other overseas jobs, but sure you could try and ask more on international platforms before you ask us. That's all, thank you. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Anything to add, Hilary, before I also give my input? Um, I think it's like definitely possible. Um, I know like my professor from my Kinkyukai, she's actually a graduate of um, SFC, like the Faculty of Policy Management, and she got a job at like the UN, I think. So. Um, you can go abroad and like she worked in Africa and things like that and all over the world. So it really depends on what you want as well. Like, do you want to work in like a really big company, like a well-known big giant company or more like startups or things like that. So it depends on what kind of person you are, but it's a definite yes. If you can go study abroad, it's not just a degree for Japan. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much, Hillary. Um, just to add on to that, it's definitely, Definitely a guaranteed yes that you can also um, get a job in other countries than Japan. I think it's more on your effort rather than the school's effort for you to really look for something outside of Japan. Whereas if you are interested in looking for um, career opportunities within Japan, the KO SSC office would be very much happy to help you on that regards when you start job hunting. Um, but in terms of looking for the right ways, to get um, career opportunities within or outside of Japan. Um, I think it's really important that from the beginning of your first semester at SFC, you really already know what kind of, um, what kind of course you wanna take and what kind of career you want to be in after you graduate from SFC. And from there, um, all the professors in SFC are very well connected within and outside of Japan because a lot of our professors have also been um, graduates or trainees of other universities, prominent universities outside of Japan. So if you are concerned in terms of being able to network um, with other prominent figures in any kind of industry that you're interested in, when, once you graduate, um, I think that being an SFC is a really good idea um, because you have professors who are very much willing to help you. All right, so next question. Um, when and how do you apply for the study abroad exchange programs with the different universities overseas? Um, would anyone like to answer this question considering I have not applied for a student abroad exchange program? 
Well, I didn't apply for sorry. Uh, so I didn't. I personally, I didn't apply for exchange program myself, but my friends do, and I saw him practicing really hard on TOEFLs. Uh, so I guess starting from second year, you should start preparing for your overseas language exams, and then you apply for each universities according to their listed. Uh, deadline on our KOSFC websites. Uh, there is a list of universities you can ch exchange to, and I think uh, the opportunity is open until your first year. So there are students that they spend their last year in overseas university as well. So that's a pretty long time that for you to apply for such a program. Yeah, Hilly, go on, please. Sorry about that. Um, thank you. Um, regarding like when and how, I was actually interested in going for my third year, and I started uh, to look into the universities that I wanted to apply to, apply to from like the beginning of this year, actually. Um, and I believe you have to start applying um, by two semesters before, I think so. But um, SFC has um, the International Center website. Um, which has like all the information on that and it's very thorough and there's a deadline step by step um, for the country that you want and like university specific steps as well so um, but you have to plan really far ahead <laughs> it's just uh, a precaution yeah thank you thanks so much for that Hillary so moving onward to the next question and Devasha feel free to jump in on this one is the food any good on campus haha <laughs> Um, I'd say it's pretty good. I and mean, we have Subway, which is like one of SFC's greatest pride. We have the Subway, the sandwich uh, shop, um, which is pretty good. And then we have a cafeteria, which sells pretty good food for a very affordable price. Um, we have like two, there's another restaurant in the second floor. Um, so yeah, I think we have pretty good and cheap food in the campus. Um, and there's like, oh, there's Watson. There's Kombini Watson and also 7-Eleven nearby. Thanks so much for that, Devasha. Um, next, are there any internship opportunities for international students at SFC? Um, I think I can answer this one before we move on to the next. Um, regarding internship opportunities, one of, um, one of the biggest requirements that international students um, have to really have under their belt would be Japanese fluency. So unless you have um, probably an N2 or an N1, or you're just really a native um, Japanese speaker, um, there would be limit, very limited inter internship opportunities for international students. Um, but in regards to internship opportunities within um, possibly your Kenkyu Kai or um, any industry that you would like to do, a lot of English speaking ones would be in the business field, I think a lot would also be in the IT field. Um, in terms of my think you guys, at least for the biosciences one, um, you it's a pretty small niche, and um, Japanese is already hard enough. Consider um, and you also have to think about um, the biosciences in terms of Japanese, not in English. So it gets really more difficult from the get go. So I think that I will just echo what I answered previously regarding the job opportunities at, in, at SFC in Japan. Um, so long as you are able to really work hard as well as network with your professors and your mentors in your, in your Kenkyu Kai, you will definitely be able to find an internship um, opportunity. Um, granted those two things. All right, so next question, which English language proficiency tests are students suggested to sit? Also, if you've sat GCSE English, or are you still required or recommended to sit English proficiency tests? Um, I think I will have to shoot this question to either Hillary, Rebecca, or Devasha, considering I have not, I am not from an international school in the Philippines. Um, so feel free to unmute yourselves, you guys, if, you have, if you'd like to add anything. Um, I can go first. So I actually took um, the international baccalaureate like IB program. So I have um, like the highest level of um, English. So I sat that 
examination. And I've also took the IGCSEs like to graduate like grade 10. So I also have the highest level of English there. And I didn't have to um, sit any like English proficiency tests like SAT or TOEFL or IELTS or anything like that. I could just use like my um, IB like diploma um, to apply and prove that like I'm proficient in English. So I definitely think like um, with a GCSE English um, pass, you can go to SFC without any other like English proficiency tests. Yeah. Um, I agree. I think I'm not, I don't remember exactly which test I submitted because I did do both IGCSE and TOEFL. Um, but I think that I know a lot of my friends who were able who went to an international school, so they didn't even have to submit like any English proficiency because uh, they studied in English. But my personal recommendation is to take TOEFL. It's because that's the most widely accepted in all of Japanese universities, because uh, a lot of Japanese universities might not accept IGCSE English. So if you had to choose which test to take, I would suggest TOEFL or IELTS. Yeah, as an international student, I also took TOEFL uh, when I applied for KO uh, and also took IB in high school. So, uh, but KO has a pretty lenient apply process because you could you can choose to submit your SAT scores or TOEFL scores or IB scores, I guess, uh, because uh, based on your high school study uh, studies. So. I guess if you want to apply for more universities, then you should definitely take a language proficiency test. But if you don't want to, then you can. Yeah, that's all based on your own choice. Thanks so much for that, Hilary, Devasha, and Rebecca. And I guess a little bit on from me. Um, I did not come from an international school in the Philippines, and I did not take the TOEFL or the GCSE English. I have never taken an English proficiency test, and I still applied for KO and a bunch of other universities in and outside of Japan. And um, all I had to do was provide a certification that I studied um, about more than six years in the language of English. So I think that um, that's pretty much okay, but if you would like to really be guaranteed um, uh, the application, I would also recommend what Devasha mentioned, that you have to take an English proficiency test, and that would be TOEFL. All right, so next question. Can you take courses at campuses other than SFC? Um, let's start with Devasha. Mm, yes, um, I have personally never done it, but I am planning to do it next semester. Um, so yeah, you're able to take courses in both Mita and Yoshi campus. I know some of my friends who've done it. Um, previously, it was online, but now that everything's starting to be on campus, I think, yeah, it would be really nice to go to different campuses uh, because most of the campuses is in Yoshi and in, um, in Tokyo, uh, and they're really nice campuses. So has anyone else uh, had that experience? Right. Uh, uh, yeah. No. Uh, did any has anyone taken classes in other campuses yet? Oh, no, I, I'm also oh, planning. Sorry. <laughs> no worries, Hillary. Thanks so much for that. Um, thanks also, Devasha, for talking more a bit about that. Um, as for me, I have taken um classes outside of SSC, most prominently in Kiyoshi. Um, although these classes were online because that was pretty much the advent of COVID. So unfortunately, I had to take those classes online. But regardless of the delivery of the classes, they were still really interesting. And they still provided me with a lot of learning opportunities um, despite that. So um, I don't want to go into detail about the next question, which is, will the courses be online or hybrid mode? Um, that kind of depends on the professors themselves. Um, most of the courses now are offered um, on campus. So that's something that you have to take into consideration. Um, during the, during the, um, the spring semester, towards the latter end of it, it got really, really hot in Japan. So a lot of um, professors actually opted to have last few classes 
online just to spare everybody from the heat wave. So it really does depend on the professors themselves. Um, so from Rebecca, how are the facilities at SFC? Uh, facilities, well, the classrooms, uh, there are different type of classrooms you can enjoy in the campus. There are small for group discussions and like uh, 10 people class uh, room. And there are also super huge lecture hall. And there are graduate students uh, building and there are regular buildings. There are gym, there are clubhouse buildings. So there are so, so uh, very uh, different facilities we can use and enjoy. And uh, personally, I think uh, the best is the media center. There are three floors or fourth floor in that building. And you can also borrow cameras and uh, 3D printers and uh, a lot of handcrafts and the machines that helps you in your research. So the facilities in SFC are quite good, I would say. Uh, anyone else want to add on? Um, okay, so maybe for Devasha, Hillary, and myself, let's choose one of our favorite facilities at SFC. Um, I can go first. Mine would be the Media Center. That is my second home in Japan. If you can't find me in my dorm or and if you can't find me in class, I am usually always in the media center. I'm, I have my favorite spot there. It's on the third floor near the quiet area. And I really, really like studying there. Um, I like that it's really quiet. I like that I'm still able to um, see some of my favorite um, teachers, also some of my classmates at the media center. So that's my really favorite hangout spot. Um, let's go with Hillary next. So uh, I would also say I like the media center, but my other favorite would also be the gym, especially since like I live um, like three minutes away from campus. So having like a free gym is really nice. And I'm not like, um, I don't do heavy stuff, so it's pretty good. They have like enough facilities. They have like different weights and like equipment and stuff, but it's only open from 1 p.m. until 8 p.m. So if you're not like the morning gym type, then you have to take that into consideration. Um, but yeah, I like the gym as well. <laughs> um, I also really enjoy the media center. I'm always there until like it closes. They always play the same exact song to remind you uh, that it's closing somewhere over the rainbow. Um, but I also like in that, that room uh, in front of Lawson where there's like a lot of individual stalls where um, you can kind of seclude yourself within like a stall to study and it has pretty comfortable seating. So yeah, I like studying there too, but it's always full, unfortunately. <laughs> Thanks so much, you guys. All right, so a couple, um, couple of questions we have left here. So next would be, is it possible to apply for the dorm recently or in the middle of the semester? Um, I think we would all share the same answer and it would be to apply as soon as possible, considering that there is now an influx of international students coming into Japan. So, um, we do have a couple friends and classmates who really found it difficult to get a dorm or an apartment within um, Shonanda area or within the immediate vicinity of SFC. So our recommend, recommended advice would be to really, really apply for a dorm as early as possible. Um, next, what is the most exciting experience you've had at SFC? Let's start with Rebecca. And then onwards to Hillary Devasha. Okay, so the most exciting experience I have is very hard to say because I have very exciting experience every semester. Uh, well, the most impressive one would be I play board game on class that is 
well actually it's not like pure playing board games but it's just a, a method that we fulfilled the class uh, requirements so we we were trying to host an international communicating uh, event and we thought about board game and uh, so based on the class that's the only time we can the group of this class could be physically together and that's why we played board game like we test the board game together every classes and uh, that's very exciting because everyone else is like very uh, serious on the class, but you are playing board game. Wow, that's super exciting, right, Devasha? <clears throat> uh, yeah, and also that's why it makes me trying to make an English division of our board game circle. Yeah, like everyone loves board game. That's very super exciting. Yes, anyone else want to share their experience? Um. Uh, I'd like to share mine, which is also kind of related to board games, you could say. Um, one of my kenkyukais is studying like how to teach uh, languages through games. So, um, and like I finally got to have like offline classes this semester. So that was exciting. Um, like we play or we study games, basically board games um, in every class. So it's exciting and like looking how it applies to teaching and things like that. So that's exciting for me. And there's also um, festivals. Um, recently, we had the Tanabata Festival. So that was really fun. Unfortunately, I couldn't see the fireworks. But um, according to like what I've seen from what people posted and stuff, it seems very exciting. Um, people were wearing like their kimonos and yukatas and stuff. So um, that seems very exciting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, I would agree that recently we had the Tanafai Festival, which was really fun. Um, it's really weird because you pass by the Kamoike every day and to see like really nice and large uh, fireworks from it uh, was such a surreal experience. So that was really fun. Um, and yeah, actually, I, we have this thing on Fridays too, where we just like uh, gather in the English lounge and like listen to music on records and just talk about music. Um, so that was really fun too. And yeah, that's uh, my experience. Thanks so much, you guys. All right, so a couple questions before maybe we could move on to the questions from our internal group, just so that we could really milk out um, all the time that we have with the participants today. When does the September 2023 enrollment guidelines come out? Um, I think I'll leave that to the KOSSC office to answer. They have provided uh, a comment in the chat regarding that. Um, next would be, does the program offer scholarships? Um, does anyone, would anyone like to answer this question? Um, anyone who um, is a scholarship student at SFC? Um, if no one wants, if everyone's okay, um, I'm actually also a scholarship recipient. Um, I think Hillary receives the same scholarship as me where um, next government scholarship students, which pays full tuition and gives you monthly allowance. Um, and I think this is um, something you can apply for when you're applying for SSC itself. Um, I think all you have to do is like click an extra box that shows that you wanna apply for the scholarship too. So it's quite a simple process. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not really too sure about scholarships after enrollment. But I've heard that there's also JASO scholarships that give you like a monthly allowance of around like 50K per month. Uh, but I'm, I'm not too sure about that one if anyone knows more. Um, okay, so I guess just to add on to that, um, one of the easiest ways for you to receive a scholarship would be to apply for the scholarship when you're applying to SFC. When you try to apply for a scholarship once you're an SFG student, it gets relatively harder because you're competing with a bunch of other students at SFC and the application period for those scholarships tend to run really short. So you always have to be on the lookout for them. You always have to be mindful of the dates and the deadlines. And one way for you to look at those um, scholarship um, application guidelines would be to visit the um, KO SFC website, as well as go to the um, deputy office. 
Um, so I guess last question that we have um, on chat would be, is it mandatory to submit your IG CSE scores when applying to SFC? Um, I would like to give this question to either Hillary or Dimasha or Rebecca because they are IB students. Um, just to answer that, I you have the option to submit your scores, I think. You have like 10 um, documents that you can submit. I submitted mine anyway, because um, I thought I'd have like a higher chance of getting in. Um, so I think it depends on like what you want to do. Um, but your like IB or A-level scores are definitely, you have to submit those. IGCSs, I think you have the option of applying it basically, yeah. Thanks so much for that, Hillary. Anything to add, Devasha or Rebecca? None. All right. Thanks so much. So I guess we still do have a couple minutes before um, the webinar is closed for this particular segment. Um, I guess you can now look on to the um, questions from our internal group. So I will be choosing um, how are classes during the COVID-19 pandemic? Mm, let's start with Devasha. Um, I feel like obviously like a lot of the classes have been transitioning to online, uh, which was kind of a weird experience and definitely kind of warped our experience of college having our first year and second year be completely online. Um, but of course there are some perks to that too, like waking up late. Um, but I think that now it is mostly going to be on campus and um, a lot of the restrictions have lifted up. So I don't think COVID will be as much of a problem anymore in terms of enjoying university life. So I think a lot of that has opened up. And yeah, I think that if you're planning to enter this year or next year, you'll be able to get um, as close to a full college experience as possible. Thanks so much for that, Zavasha. Anything to add, Rebecca or Hillary? Um, yeah, just adding on to what Devasha said, I think if you apply this year or next year, um, it's basically like much better <laughs> for you because uh, I think most of us had to go to Japan mid-semester and um, get to a dorm mid-semester, those kind of things. We had to worry about like getting into Japan. Uh, some of my friends still haven't got to Japan and we're becoming, um, becoming like second years. So um if you're coming like this year or next year you're not gonna have that i don't think <laughs> yeah so all good <laughs> thank you all right thanks so much for that devasha and hillary um i guess the next one would be um are students able to sign up for classes taught in japanese rebecca anything you'd like to say on that matter yeah, if you're confident enough, you think you can for, uh, finish all your assignments in Japanese and get a high, high score or uh, as any score you want, then you can definitely uh, sign in the Japanese syllabus because there's no limitation in which kind of class you can t take or which campus you can go. It's all free. Uh, the freedom in SFC is beyond the imagination. <laughs> Beyond my imagination at first, because yeah, just let's just say that uh, you can do everything you want if you're qualified enough. Be confident. Thanks so much for that, Rebecca. And so just to add on to that, um, it also depends on which classes and how you're going to register for them. Either you're, you can register in two ways. So the first one would be through credit. Um, you will be receiving a grade for that class. And one, the second one would be through audit. Um, you can take that class simply for learning purposes. Like you will not be graded um, regarding your performance in that class. So if you are looking to just learning or like finding ways in which you can improve your Japanese fluency, you can take classes in Japanese without having to receive a grade in them. Although that fully depends on the professors themselves. Um, second, um, second thing I'd like to add is um, there are a lot of classes that are available in Japanese, but not available in English. So a lot of um, international students like us 
um, still really want to take that class, we can email the professor before the start of um, the semester and we can ask them whether or not they'd be willing to take us in, um, us giga students, and if we would be able to take um, the exams or the presentations or the assignments, write them in English. And depending on the professors themselves and their English fluency, more often times than not, they will allow you to take their class, even if it's in Japanese, and they will be very happy to help you um, with providing English um, supplementary materials just so that um, they're pretty much um, they're they're pretty confident that you're still learning in their class despite the language barrier. Um, so we do have a couple new questions. Um, what kind of sports clubs can students from Giga join? Do you mean circles or do you mean varsity clubs like Pukatu? Um, while we wait for your answer for that one, we'll answer the next question. So how much does it cost to live in Japan? Um, maybe we can all answer this um, one by one. Let's start with Devasha. Um, I really think it kind of depends on person to person. I think I personally guiltily spend quite a lot, um, but I also do do part-time jobs. Um, but I think in a month, I would estimate that I've spent around 60 to 80K, uh, maybe around that much, um, but yeah. Thanks so much, Devasha. Um, let's move on with Hillary. Um, for me, uh, since I'm living in the dorm and like for mine, the rent is like fixed. Like, uh, it doesn't really depend on how, how much water or electricity you use. It's like 65k every month, um, and I don't spend that much. Uh, so like, a total of like 100k per month is okay for me. Um, and yeah, but if you're getting like an apartment, it could range up to even like 100,000, I think, depends on what kind of um, apartment you get. Um, so yeah, you have to worry about that. And also if you cook or if you buy food. <laughs> yeah, I cook, so it's much cheaper. <laughs> That's for me, thank you. Thanks, Hilary. Um, Re Rebecca? Uh, well, let's say that it's really difficult to say uh, what you will gonna spend in Japan a month because uh, everyone's so different. Also, if you got a scholarship or you got a well-paid part-time job, then your monthly allowance could be much more lower. Also, uh, depends on what you like during your daily life. Because if you go out clubbing, you go out traveling a lot, then your expense will be super high because the transportation fee in Japan is not cheap not cheap uh but for me uh, except from the dorm fee i would spend another 60k for all my transportation my food and other expenses a month so combined together it's like 120k ish every month yeah, but they are not all coming from my parents. I usually do some part-time job, work for uh, uh, some some work I can get from online, or even you can work for school, because SFC provide a SA job, a student assistant, or you can work in student cafeteria. They are also paid jobs. So yeah, depends on yourself. All right, thanks for that, Rebecca. And then for myself, um, it really does depend on the lifestyle you live and what you tend to be interested in, especially with the um, friend groups that you're also associated with. So for myself, um, I would budget around 100 to 120K in Japanese yen per month. Um, and I'm pretty guilty for spent for overspending on that regard because, as mentioned previously, because of the because of the pandemic and because of the really strict um, Japanese border laws, it was really difficult for me to get to Japan early on. So I only got into Japan um, April of this year. So um, I was I kind of allowed myself to 
see as many of my friends as possible, go out as much as possible, um, like indulge in all of the things that I wasn't able to do. So that kind of brought a lot of my spending to a max. And that is something that a lot of international students will share, actually. The first few months of living in Japan, it gets really, really expensive because you kind of indulge in all of the things that you weren't able to do and you're excited to kind of um, kind of do when, once you get to Japan. And eventually, um, all your expenses will die down or will be at a fixed rate now once you calculate it um, after the first few months of living in Japan. Um, so now we are actually, we actually only have two minutes left. So there's one more question. So I think we can have this one. And I'd like for um, Hillary to answer this one. Is it possible to join a sports varsity club as an international student? Um, I'm not really sure about sports varsity clubs. Um, I only know like uh, JES, the Japanese English Sports Club um, Circle, actually which is the one that Devasha mentioned, which is made for Giga students. Um, I've never looked into sports varsity clubs, so I don't think I'm qualified to answer this question. Would anyone else like to try out? Uh, okay. I, I could add on some. Uh, so I personally, I really like playing soccer. So I tried to look at the uh, soccer club uh in sfc so unfortunately they are mainly in japanese because in sfc there's a circle website that all of the sport all, every uh circles available are on that website so you can see a lot of circles on that but they're specific like mainly they're japanese so if you're confident and uh, or if you can speak japanese or you, you think you can speak in japanese then you should definitely like attend their open like attend their opening uh q a session uh, or doing uh like sending a direct email for that also the sfc officers send uh uh relevant uh answers in the chat box you should check on that also there's a friend of us uh he's a part uh, he's a member of the ko rugby team so i think if you want you can definitely join them but maybe there's kind of requirements you should check on their official website yeah that's all Thanks so much, you guys. So I guess just one thing to add from me, it is very much possible to join a sports varsity club, especially at, even if you are an international student, so long as you're you know, willing to put in the amount of time and effort to um, be very consistent with the sports varsity club regulations and um, with the Japanese as well. So I guess we are now, we now have to end um, our, segment of the webinar and we hope that we've been able to really answer all your questions and we I will um, on behalf of uh, the Association for International Students we're very very excited to welcome you guys next semester we hope to see you guys next semester thank you so much you guys bye, -bye.